आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड मैनेजमेंट भक्त कवि नरसिंह मेहता यूनिवर्सिटी जूनागढ़ एंड यू ऑल आर हार्डली वेलकम टू दिस यूनिवर्सिटी एंड फ्रॉम नाउ ऑनवर्ड्स यू विल बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस फैमिली एंड यू विल हैव टू रेज द नेम ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्सिटी लाइक अदर्स डू द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड मैनेजमेंट हैज ऑर्गेनाइज अडेप्ट सीरीज नंबर नाइन टूडे आई वॉमली वेलकम टूडे इज एमिनेट एक्सपर्ट सी ए डॉक्टर मर्जुन जॉकी सर टूडे आई वॉमली वेलकम ऑनरेबल एंड एंथ्यूजिस्टिक वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर चेतन त्रिवेदी सर आई ऑल्सो वेलकम of the executive council member principals professors and research scholars and my faculty members i also welcome who are watching through youtube i also warmly welcome today's uh, eminent expert uh, professor uh, dr marjun jockey sir adept talk is designed to improve the knowledge in the field of commerce and management in the first century is the century of the knowledge and aim the department is to give quality education over valuable assets to our students kindly join with us it is a journey of the knowledge and let's share the knowledge and build new india about the ca dr marjun jockey sir he has been working as a director of the faculty of uh, commerce and management gls university ahmedabad since long time he considered as a good academician in the field of accountancy and finance also uh, so many research uh, work and uh, uh, he is invited resource person at the select conference approximately 24 number of published article as well as research paper in 15 number of books edited and co-authors in 15 also and uh, uh, with more than two decades of the teaching experience and uh, distinguished academic records of the dr jockey sir as a strong academic uh, presence in the field of accountancy and taxation and finance also He has provided services as a resource person, subject experts at uh, various professional institutes like ICA, ICSI, Institute of Post uh, Accounts also. So, uh, so many government uh, part for the different institutes also. He is the research scholar at the GLS University Ahmedabad, actively involved in the uh, different institutes and editorial boards of the various reputed journals. Our notable vice chancellor. Professor Dr. Chetan Trivedi Sir uh, has inspired us to start this series under his episode title. He is uh, so busy as uh, schedules today, so he will not come. But uh, I will, uh, I feel happy to inform you that Bhakta Kavi Nursery Mehta University may be the first university who started this series for the commerce, management, finance, accountancy, marketing, and general management topics. Today is our uh, topic that is emerging trends and technology in accounting. Now I welcome today's eminent experts, uh, Chartered Accountant Dr. Marjun Jockey sir, delivering expert speech topic for that. Please sir, Jockey sir. Thank you so much sir. Respected Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Dr. Chetan Trivedi sir, Dr. Dodia sir, thank you so much. for a very warm welcome the coordinators organizers and it is really great initiative by bhakt kavi narsi mehta university and the department of commerce and management to initiate this talk i am extremely happy that this during this difficult time such a great initiative has been taken and i am thankful to dr dodia sir for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts on the topic so thank you so much as the slide is visible that the topic is about emerging trends and technology in accounting i'm going to start with the traditional part of it where we will first check about the evolution when we studied accounting probably in 11th standard we started studying the subject and we were made to understand that just like a communication is important and for that we need to understand the language same way accounting is regarded as a business language though that was the origin of our understanding for the subject now this two pics visible on your left 
is a traditional number cruncher what we call or we used to call him now no longer but earlier we used to call this gentleman as a munim ji if you see the pic you will find an old typewriter and a person who is very much devoted and dedicated to his work of probably number crunching towards your right the pic is something different something very apt for the recent scenario where not only the basic number crunching but all the ratios and the difficult calculations projections also are done with the help of the smart machines so this is how actually we can say that we have evolved the journey of accounting this is how we have evolved if you go back to the ancient time the very first thing that came for understanding what we call it number crunching was the invention of abacus so it was used actually to keep a track of the calculation although we can't say that this abacus actually was a technology it happened probably around uh, 600 bc in china that is what uh, we have the recorded facts for after abacus the next thing that came was the calculator now calculator we can say it is a technology it actually helped us like anything so after this manual work with the abacus when we have the technology of calculator then i think it is regarded as something very great invention that we are saved from all the manual work and the accountants were extremely delighted and happy at that point of time probably when the calculators came but then we realized that actually all the work cannot be done on the calculator and then came the advent of computers traditionally we all are aware and we know about that the computers were of a completely a different size than what they are as of today so that again we are evolving and based upon that after computers came the software probably the microsoft excel is so useful and helpful to the accountant because of the electronic spreadsheet and all the quick commands that we can do the calculation without any mistake with full accuracy so this is how we can say that we have evolved for the accounting part right from the abacus though it was not a technology till a recent and the latest development or a technology that is the software now this type of a pick or a gentleman who is so dedicated to his work sitting on a typewriter with the help of the book the book the ledger book doing and keeping all the records of accounting probably will go down in the history at every place i have kept the references where it has been taken and it is shared with you so now this is probably going to be a history it has actually become a history now the question arises that this is the journey that we have walked through not individually but probably for centuries now the main question is what next if you again see the two pick probably the pick to the left that is on the right of the individual 
is something which is going to be actually scary. When I say scary, there are certain reasons behind it. When we have a look to the data available, that whatever work an accountant can do can be done with speed, with accuracy, without mistake, and multiple times and endless hours with the machine. Now, if this is the possibility, then the big question arises that who are going to employ us as an individual or an accountant? Actually, when this accounting, our father of accounting, we all know when he invented the system of double entry, though he came from the mathematics background, centuries ago, the system was invented. But now, even this lockdown, probably of this last one year, tough time, probably the toughest time that all everyone has faced, again has given a point to ponder or a question to think for. That are we ready for the next wave of innovation? Because the big four and one of that big four, Deloitte, as a published report that the robots are coming. We all know the work of robots, but for accountants, they are actually going to take away the manual work. So it is going to be a bit difficult. Now, why I mentioned a bit difficult for accountant and the accounting profession? Because the title to my topic that I am sharing today is the emerging trends and the technology. So we actually till now has checked the evolution right from the abacus part to the software. Part. But now there is a problem. And the problem is this has again been a published data. I have kept the reference also. And this picture is going to be very scary. The reason is the picture and the data depicts or actually shows that because of computerization, what is the probability or the chances that there is going to be a job loss within the next two decades? And if you see the probability carefully, the table, the least probability of a job loss is of a recreational therapist or a dentist. Because I think that work, it is difficult for a robot to do it. That is how we can summarize. But if you go down and if you read the second last, where actually we all are more interested and I will say more concerned accountants and auditors. And the probability is too high, 0.94. It means there are 94% chances that the accountant and the auditor job will be replaced by the robots. Now, what does this indicate? This indicate that we as an individual will have to very rapidly try and understand and adapt and learn irrespective of the age, irrespective of the age, the new things. Otherwise, just like what happened to dinosaur can happen to me. If I don't adapt myself with the new things of or the trends or or the technology that is used for accounting. And this last one year has taught us so many things. And actually, we have learned also we are evolving. But I think it is right time that we will have to run. If you walk, probably you will be slow. You will feel that you are left behind. 
This is another authentic data. The reference have been kept over here. But again, very surprising. If we go and to check the last paragraph visible, human replacement, we all know it is going to happen. Maybe because of the age, maybe because of the new technology. That can be the reason. But again, the scary picture over here is while the old jobs will be replaced, that will be fine. Because what before 10 years the accountants were doing, probably today the accountants are doing something different. So that has to go on. New ones will be created. That is also fine. But the percentage, 65% of the children entering the primary school as of today, now are expected to end up working in the roles that currently do not exist. It means that whatever they are learning today, probably they will have to learn something new when they end up in the corporate world. So earlier what happened that the rules and the new part to the accounting probably changed. Maybe after a decade, nearing to 10 years. But now what has happened? Probably in less than one year, we get something new. We get a new regulation. We get something new to the act. So we will have to remain updated. We will have to learn at every time, irrespective of the age. That has been taught and we have learned in the probable last one year. From 21st March last year till the 3rd March this year, everyone has, will agree and appreciate that we have learned something new. And the accounting profession, still, in spite of the current difficult times or the tough times that we all are facing, is going to change in the next decade. And what I feel, all the professional organizations, educational institutions, the universities should respond. And actually, this is one good initiative. I really appreciate the initiative by your university and, and everyone, Dr. Dodia, sir, and everyone for this very great initiative that you are inviting the different individuals to share. And these are the three challenges that we as an accounting, commerce and management accounting department or the profession will have to check for or look forward. The evolving and the smart technology. Continued globalization of reporting and disclosure standards and the new form of regulation. I will just go to one more additional point that in case if you someone is planning for a doctoral study, I think here are the areas. It may not be taken as a topic, but we can say here is an area where one can think of even to take up a doctoral study. On 24th of Jan 2021, just recent past, the Economic Times mentioned that India is going to release the Forensic Accounting and Investigation Standards, the first country to do so. Now, this is something very unique, very creative and very different that our country has taken the lead. Again, this can be an area for a research. This is very recent past. So these are the new trends or technology. I'm going to mix up some trends, regulations and technology. I'm trying to share. The next one is forensic audit. We never realized till all this bank and other institution scams happened. Then we realized it is time that not only the internal or the statutory audit, but even forensic audit is the requirement. And even RBI is also and have mentioned that the banks are required to go for this. Now, this confirms that government of India is adopting a very highly collaborative approach 
addressing various challenges like fraud. The government is working for the welfare of the society. It is actually a good governance that has led to all these initiatives. Even our Vision New India 2022 with Sankab Se Siddhi, if you check all the parts that includes the corporate culture free from fraud. So these are all the initiatives taken by the government and when we all are supporting that. And this is good and it will be good for everyone. It is going to be good for everyone. All the references and all that are kept. These are all the recent things. Now when probably I was a student and when you also studied in your college or your postgraduate level, when the chapter of that ratio analysis we studied, financial statement analysis, we all did what? We all either did a comparison of the horizontal part or the vertical part and with few different ratios, the liquidity or the profitability fine. That is okay. That is a classical approach. But we have a more new, a more relevant and a more modern and a mathematical approach. I am going to share with you two such approaches which will be so relevant and you can try it out. And they are time-tested models. They are time-tested models. The first one is the digital analysis given by Benford. So it is better known as Benford law. And the second one given by Professor Banish, it is known as Banish model. Okay, we will just take a glance through both the models that how these two models work. So that this is something new to our accounting. This is a modern or a mathematical approach, which is mentioning that it is with the name of the digital analysis, but actually it is given the name after the individual Benford. Now, what is this analysis? This analysis is actually the analysis of frequency of the digits in every transaction. Now, what does this frequency mean? For example, in an organization, if an employee is buying a petrol of 500 rupees, or you are paying the electricity bill of 3,226 rupees. So this technique is actually giving you some red flags. Red flags means that there will be something highlighted for caution. Suppose in a company, in a year, there are total 5,000 transactions. Now each and every transaction will be starting with either a digit 1 or a digit 9. Any number. 0 cannot be in the starting. So 9 digits can be at the first place. Whereas there is a possibility of 10 digits including a 0 at the second place, third place, fourth place and so on. So this technique, it is a time tested given by Benford is going to analyze the frequency of the digit. Now, this is very interesting. We will take over here an actual practical situation, an example. In this example, if you see to the table given, in the table to the first column, you will find number of transactions starting with the digits. Either start with digit 1, 2, 3 or 9. Out of total 7,000 transactions, there are 1,000 transactions starting with digit 1. There are 500 transactions starting with digit 2 and so on it is given. Totally there are 7,000 transactions. And in the third column, the percentage of the transaction has been derived. So 1,000 out of 7,000 will be a 14.28%. 500 out of 7,000 will be a 7.14%. That is how. This is the percentage that your transaction starting with digit 1 
in the first place, there are 14% transaction out of this 7,000. This is the actual data. Now, this actual data you can find for any company based upon the first digit and the total. That is a possibility in Excel. Fine. Now, what we will do, we will compare this percentage of the actual transaction with the model given transaction percentage. The Penford law, it is a time tested model, just like we have our log table, just like we have our Z table. Okay, we have some scores given. Same way, this table of Penford is giving us an idea regarding the percentage of occurrence. See, if you go to the digit zero, zero in first place is not a possibility. So it is a dash. Then digit one in the first place, 30% chances. It means Benford says that out of all the transactions, 30% transaction maximum in a company can start with digit one in the first place. 17% of the transactions in a company can start with digit two in the first place. And even for the second, third and fourth place, they have the percentage. So this is a ready table. Now we are going to compare our actual with the ready table. So we made the two columns, the digits with actual frequency and the standard. Standard, I repeat, comes from the Benford law, the digital analysis table. Now we are going to compare transaction number one, starting with digit one, that is 14% transactions in our company organization were starting with digit one and the table says maximum there can be 30%. So we are actually well within the range. Even for transactions starting with digit two, there can be 17% and in our company there are seven. So this is also falling in the range. But if you very carefully focus on the transactions starting with Digit 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9. See, the variation has been highlighted with the red color. But more important is the management, the auditor, or the accountant controller should focus or concentrate on those transactions and should investigate into depth for those transactions commencing with digits 3, 4, 5, 8, and 9. These are red flags. There is a possibility that some manipulation might have happened. This is one good technique that we can apply in addition to all your ratios. Another part of this is that this law or the digital analysis can be applied not only to the first digit. Actually, we just check the first digit. It can also be applied for the second, third and fourth. That will give you more accurate the answer, more nearer the answer. There is one condition that this law can only be applied if there are minimum 300 transactions. But I'm very much sure that for an organization, at least in a year, number of transactions will be definitely more than 300. So I think it can be applied to every organization. This is something new. The next one, which is very much relevant to the ratio analysis. See, we have the understanding of few different category ratio profitability ratio and the liquidity ratio or the turnover or the leverage etc based upon that for a given balance sheet we will try and analyze it nothing wrong in it but we can also in addition to our routine standard ratio analysis fine financial statement analysis fine but we can even add on with 
this model understand the banish model which has been developed by professor banish which is very widely used by the forensic auditor and the model is giving us just like we have a z table okay, same way this is an m score the standard m score that is based upon a formula that will come it is based upon a formula based upon that standard formula just like we have a formula for return on capital employed or a current ratio there is a formula to derive the m score it is actually a mix of certain parts and the uh, professor banish says that the standard ratio or the score has been set as minus 2.22 if the outcome for any organization of the actual data is less than minus 2.22 that is the set just like we have a current ratio for certain industry 2 is to 1 for certain we keep it 1 is to 1 same way the set over year score is minus 2.22 it means that if it is less than minus 2.22 there is a zero probability of manipulation and if it is not there are chances and here is the information that what are the ratios that we have to pick up there is a list given for the ratios that we have to pick up there is a test score formula given and if you are using this it formulas with the final m score model you place all the values and if you get less than minus 2.22 there is a zero probability if you are getting a different score there is a chance of manipulation now these are just two good techniques that we can apply there are so many things like this these are the new trends and this can be done with the help of technology in a more better more faster and a more accurate way we all know the full details and the actual facts we all are aware for satyam computers and the individual a very good analysis has been done by the learned researchers i have kept the reference also what they did normally when we take up a financial analysis we will do the balance sheet or a pnl statement analysis even in banish model we did that only but over here we have something new to study what they did was they actually studied the top management language signals for a possible fraud they studied the satyam companies chairman letter to the shareholder over the period of the fraud so during that 5 6 years then this wrong doing was in the mind of the founder individual every year the balance sheet got published in the balance sheet we know the requirements of the chairman letter it was there but the study conducted revealed something very interesting so we can say that not only the number crunching is going to give us an idea about the possible fraud but there is a possibility with the technology that even without studying only the pure numbers we have a possibility to derive a red flag and what these researchers did and they have mentioned uh, if you get a chance you need to go through this paper it is very nicely uh, written and research paper where they have analyzed four components one is the tone one is the frequency of the use of the personal pronouns then the frequency of extreme positive and the negative emotion words and this text analysis program diction file has helped them to do this and the findings were very surprising 
the researchers found that there are certain emotional changes that will occur in the human being or the mind of an individual when it thinks of doing something wrong. And that has been very nicely researched and supported and proved in this paper. And it was very surprising to read the final analysis. And then gentlemen went to the probable court and then to the jail. But when you read the analysis, it is found and it is proved that in the starting, that is, they studied five years. The first year, when they studied the chairman's letter, the language was I to the first person. But gradually, the language shifted, the writing shifted, the message shifted from using the letter I to V. So actually, there was a shift to share the blame. Secondly, the tone was becoming more positive. And third, there was a gradual decrease in the numerical reference. It means the first report, it might be highlighted like that the profit has increased by 80%. We are giving dividend of 30%, something like that. Actually feeling proud and boasting about the company. Nothing wrong in doing that as an owner or a chairman. But during that, when they started thinking of doing something wrong, there were changes of the emotion, of the tone, of the language. And this is what has been studied. Now, this is again with the help of the technology, something new to look at. All this are suggesting, and again, a survey conducted has proved it that this accounting technology innovation, all the controllers, maybe the CFO or the CEO or the top management are actually finding it difficult to cope up. And we all have also realized that it is going to be difficult day by day because now this hybrid model of education and everything possible, it is going to become difficult. We will have to adapt ourselves more faster even of what we can think of. And artificial intelligence. Now this artificial intelligence is actually impacting, affecting everyone. We are only right now focusing from the field of accountancy or finance. But we all agree to it that AI is actually affecting everyone. And these are the new emerging technologies that we have to consider for accounting. And again, I will like to add over here, this can be out of the list given. It can be a probable research area. Can be a probable research area. We are going to discuss today, based upon the available time, a bit of robotic process automation. Actually, the companies, they will prefer not to employ an individual, an accountant like me, rather than to think of actually implementing an automated system. The reason there is a possibility that I have a limitation of working for a company for maximum probably 10 to 12 hours a day. There is a possibility I might end up taking a leave or a sick leave or a CL. But the machine will be working with same efficiency without any mistake for 24 by 7. Many companies have adopted as of today and many companies are planning to actually adopt to robotic accounting. Artificial intelligence and robotics coming together. The Google also has signaled it. It is the next best thing.
probably that is going to take away as if you can recall the initial that table where we checked that because of computerization there is a possibility of a job loss and the accounting and the auditors were at the risk of 94% and this is the reason this is the reason so if we still if i still continue to analyze a given company based upon a ratio or a current ratio or a return on capital employed or a gross profit ratio and i don't understand or adapt myself like the title for the talk adapt myself for applying the digital analysis or a banish model probably the company is not going to employ me so i will also have to learn something extra so that it can become helpful to my employer and i'm sure that you all agree and know this might have read also but even a robot has been given or granted a citizenship is the first robot ever to have been granted a nationality so we are very near that human being and robot might be working together at a workplace might be working together at a workplace human being might go home in the evening but robots will continue we will have to match the speed there are so many good software i think the time yes there are so many good software we will just speed up now kensho is one kensho software is described as the world's first computational knowledge engine for the financial industry it can read the data it can analyze the data in such a speed and i think this pick over here is depicting it there is no need of a human if you are not understanding the latest technology everywhere see this is like working human and the robots are going to work together we have so many different softwares which are probably working to 100% accuracy fast and companies prefer and the reason over here you get all the benefits of this being done by the software it is incredibly fast and 100% it is consistent it does not need to sleep or take vacation so it is available 24 by this are another analysis so all the big fours made by deloitte kpmg eny they have all reported time and again that artificial intelligence and robotics are actually going to take away probably the jobs of an individual if we don't learn and adapt now what is robotic accounting just to share with you a very practical and a simple example consider one individual is an accounting executive in a company now before this robotic process automation what we call rpa before this system has been employed what is his daily work if you just quickly go through the daily work is he has a quick book excel pdf invoice from a customer outlook he opens it in the computer he pulls out some data saves it somewhere in the excel put something transfer it to another part department where the check will become ready so is what you manually actually doing some definite type of a work a template driven work or a system driven work daily think of a company where a turnover is 1000 crores so this accounting executive is going to do this typical work for all the 10 hours that is there in the company similar type of work and definitely if you end up doing a same work time and again probably your efficiency will tend to go down because nothing new are to now with this work if it is a very similar type of a work a template driven what we can say of 
fixed step driven i think it will be better that you can sit down properly you analyze the type of the work get it proper documented and then you can use this automation so that you save your time for just extracting the data from the mail keeping it to the excel then uh, making a summary of it then shifting it to the next department getting the check ready this all can be system driven actually you are saving you are saving hours and hours of human being that can be actually used or there can be another value addition like this a very typical work of a bank reconciliation because in bank reconciliation there cannot be anything difficult it is just the comparison of the two books and what is not similar we will be extracting and putting in the statement this can be very easily very effectively and in no time can be done with this robotic process automation so actually you are going to save so much of human time for the preparation of the statement for the preparation of the statement this is actually the best example probably in each and every company at least we can employ this automation technique for brs that we have done time and again by the atlas or the debit credit method but this can be automated there are some limitations definitely while we apply the automatic process or automation but not for every type of the work in an organization but at least for some work which are rule based which are consistent and which are template driven at least if some of the work of the organization can be automated you are going to use that spare time of the human being for some great value addition now this is over here the different type of the possible areas where or which can be definitely shifted from the manual portion to the automatic portion and as discussed and shared there can be n number of advantages 24 by 7 working 365 days in a year working with no leaves for the individual it has been proved and there is a data that errors will go down cost will go down we get more accurate result and we get good time for human being for some upgradation so these are the advantages probably every organization should think of applying the robotic process automation i think we are nearing to the ending part again probably this is the same thing that i will conclude over here for the robotic automated process just to very quickly sum up for the remaining that if this is the technology that we have today probably for after the next the after the completion of this decade probably by 2030 where we will be any years is too long a time probably too long a time this where all the predictions i repeat this where all the prediction from that pest analysis i have just taken the technology part of it we just forget right now the political and the economic and the socio culture part from technology part this are all the prediction before 2020 if after next 10 years what will happen out of this i think few of them already have started probably the small cars all electric 3d printing self driving vehicle tesla and we we are actually feeling probably the excitement also and if you are into that type of a job then you will be having some anxiety and a fear probably that there is a possibility of a job loss as of today we have the smart cars we have the smart homes not only the smart mobile or the smart computer or the smart tv and that is a possibility and even the cyber crimes are now detected very smartly and all this is happening because of artificial intelligence over here we have some data and the data says 
that there is going to be a shift in this artificial intelligence market from 2016 it was 1.4 billion it is going to become 60 million in 2025 from 1.4 billion to 60 billion and the gdp by 2030 because of this thanks to ai may be around 15.7 trillion and it has been proved that this ai can increase the business productivity by 40 percent this is the history of ai i think we all are probably familiar with siri or alexa out of the list but this is actually the timeline we can say the history of ai cloud computing is another thing that if we feel that we are not using it i think we are among this 95 percent people actually we are doing this all these gmail things and the hardware and the software that you are saving that is actually happening in cloud computing and now the companies are actually using this cloud computing to their advantage and to the advantage of the client this professional accounting organizations and the individuals are using this for the advantage blockchain is another technology i can still recall during probably before 20 years when we get an outstation check i think it was taking around four to five days probably a week time also for getting it cleared right now the checks are getting cleared in even less than a day time and all big banks recently in 2019 they have all formed we can say a group so that the work can happen more swiftly and blockchain actually is going to be the future of accounting over here and i'm just trying to just share with you the different trends or the possible future area for the accounting part towards the end i'm sure that as after 2020 we feel that we are right now at a different level or we are in a different uh, way we are having the education also the work style also maybe the hybrid form but because of this AI, what is going to be in 2030, probably no one can imagine. But at least we can work hard and we can remain together, if not behind, with the speed of the technology. And we will have to learn. These are few of my worries over here. That technology on a whole is likely to create definitely more jobs than destroy it. But we will have to adapt ourselves to understand the new things. And what I feel that the CFO or the CEO or the top management in the future will have to understand not only for the management part or the accounting part, but I think more for the technology. And again, I have mentioned over here that unless and until I don't understand, study and adapt to that technology, I think I will be on the same route of the extinction. That is the dinosaur route. And by 2025, all digital data will be available to everybody. And I think it is time that technology is going to be probably the panacea for every ill. And this is a very good point or a question to ponder that if these are the two types of individual, if company wants to hire, and over here, a very relevant question that do we need an accountant who can understand technology or company will prefer that they take a technologist who can understand accounting? I am 100% sure that no one will try to employ me if I know accounting, but I don't understand technology. But if I actually am uh, understanding technology in a more smarter way and I can manage some part of accounting, probably then I will be more useful to the company rather than a very smart accountant with no understanding of technology. And all this that I've shared over here, I've kept over here the references. And at this point, 
I end. Thank you so much. Again, I thank University and Dr. Dodia sir for giving me the opportunity to share. Thank you so much, sir. Anytime, please. Mute chhe tamar awaaz. Mute. Mute chhe. Anita Ben, mute chhe. Mute chhe awaaz. Mic, mic. Anita Ben, please, what of things, Mate? Ek minute. Are you? Yeah. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Thank you, sir. Adept Talk is the result of our vision to explore the heterogeneous attributes of commerce and management and its recent trends. It is designed to improve the knowledge in the field of commerce and management. As we all know that 21st century is the century of knowledge and we, the team of Department of Commerce and Management, aims to give quality education to our valuable assets to our students. I show my gratitude to our, uh, to our young, dynamic and visionary professor, uh, Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Chetan Trivedi, sir, who always motivate us to some, do something extraordinary. I show my thankfulness towards our today's eminent speaker, CA Dr. Marzun Jokhi, Director, okay. Faculty of Commerce, GLS University, who delivered his expertise knowledge on emerging trends and technology in accounting. Artificial intelligence, automation, and blockchain are the modern technology in the field of accounting, which saves a lots of time of the financial planner, and they can focus on strategic part of the financial management. Thank you, sir, for, uh, for your valuable time. I also source my thankfulness towards Dr. Bhavsi Dodia, sir, head and associate professor doc, uh, of Department of Commerce and Management, under whose expert management department start this series of talk. I show my thankfulness towards Mr. Vinit Verma and Dr. Dinesh Kumar Chowda for nicely coordinate the series of ADEP talk. Last but not least, I show my gratitude towards our dearest students and all the viewers who connect with us to making this talk more interesting. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jokey Sahib. Thank you.